These are my 10, my 10? <laughs> Okay, hello everyone. I have wanted to make this video for actually quite a long time. These are my 10 strange things about Pakistan. Number one, driving is crazy in Pakistan. I actually drove a few times, well twice, and each time I was terrified. Let me give you a few examples. When I first <laughs> saw people on motorbikes, I would see families, like five, six, seven people on a bike, on a motorbike. That shocked me. They're driving so recklessly and there's kids on, on these bikes. For instance, in the UK and in most places, if you're on the roundabout, you have right away, but not in Pakistan. If you're on the roundabout, you have to give way to the people coming into the roundabout. That makes no sense to me at all. I couldn't believe that. <laughs> Horns are very normal, just to let people know that you're there. So when you beep the horn, it's like, okay. If you beep the horn in the UK, you've done something wrong. You've done something really wrong. And then people start shouting at each other or something. You only use it in very special circumstances. Also, headlights. When you flash your headlights in Pakistan, it means I'm going first. If you flash your headlights in the UK, it means you go first. So that also made no sense to me. I was just like, okay. It, it took time to learn the rules of the road. And you know what? Once you learn, it's not really chaos anymore. It's just, it's like a dance. That's what it feels like. It is very dangerous, but yeah, somehow they make it work. Number two, alcohol is prohibited, but they have an active brewery in, I think it's a place called Bourbon. It's somewhere in the north north of Islamabad. I think it was brought in by the Brits and then they just never closed. So I'm just wondering how that works. I think foreigners are allowed to drink in Pakistan, but not the natives. So I don't know how that works. Number three, everything is last minute in Pakistan. Everything, even wedding arrangements. <laughs> That shocked me, really shocked me. Okay, let me give you an example. So if you're gonna meet with your friends here or make an arrangement with somebody, say it's Monday today, you say, okay, right, I'll meet you on Friday or I'll meet you next Monday at one o'clock. In Pakistan, it's like, I'll meet you in an hour, you know? And if you say to them, I'll meet you next week, they're like, oh my God, that's too far ahead. They do everything last minute. They book flights last minute, but then they turn up last minute too. If a wedding starts at seven, people won't arrive until nine, nine o'clock, something like that, because they've left everything last minute. Coming from the UK, I don't really like that because here it's quite disrespectful if you turn up late. In America as well, they are very prompt. So it's, it's something to get used to. And I know it's not just in Pakistan. I know it's in many, many other countries in the East. Number four, people are so sharp so intelligent. They know exactly what's going on around them, not just with their lives, but with everyone else's lives as well. So sharp. And even when you go out to the stores, for instance, the way they do things is just so meticulous and so fast. They're just, just switched on. They're so sharp. I can't explain. And I know things are generally quite untidy in these types of countries, in India and Pakistan, but there's just this system that I haven't actually seen in the UK. People here, they still don't have that, that rhythm. Number five, what will others say? Pakistani people really care about what other people think of them to the extreme. It's like keeping up with the Joneses on another level. And that's, that's quite tough. That's a whole other topic, I think, in itself. And it isn't just Pakistan, it's many other countries. Actually, it's the whole world, but there it can get tricky. Number six, they have so many interesting sayings, some of them very peculiar. For instance, door number, when things are second best <laughs> or copied or fake. Fun car, which is somebody quite artificial. Like, hey guys, hey you know, all this kind of stuff, like a lot of people are on YouTube. <laughs> it also means artist. I have a, a joke going, you know, with a few of my friends and I'm like, that person's a fun car. And they're like, 
yeah they are <laughs> and many other things i might make a video about that because they are so fascinating it's like deep wisdom in them actually number seven they mostly have japanese cars like hondas and toyotas they also have some suzukis most of their cars are like a lighter shade but that's for the sun and cars are so expensive they're about three times the price of a British car but if you were to actually bring say for instance a Mercedes over from the UK or wherever you would have to pay I don't know if it's an extra 100,000 pounds it's mainly I think due to the importation tax on top of the price of the car it is just crazy number eight the food there is so delicious but so fattening because most things are either deep fried or they're cooked for hours and hours. I remember watching this woman cook spinach and I said, uh, I think that's ready now. And she's like, no, 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 it has another few hours to go. I was like, oh my goodness, okay. Also junk food has become a big thing in Pakistan over the past few years and there are a lot of additives. Like I noticed they had donuts, pastry, trees just all the unhealthy stuff from the west i feel like they're they're eating that a lot of chains like mcdonald's obviously what are the other ones fat burger oh there's so many i i don't eat at these places so i can't really recall the names they think because the west is more superior they have that in their minds which i try to have discussions with people to say please don't follow the west please hold on to your culture hold on to your roots don't sell out to the UK don't, or the West. Yeah, that is a whole other topic in itself and it is so scary, so scary. Number nine. The education system is all about memorizing. They're obsessed with grades and homework and all this kind of stuff. I think because there's so much competition, I don't know if it's because of that or it's because of the original British rule. I don't know what, what it is exactly, but that's the case. Number 10. Oh my, I think I've saved the best till last. I had to actually get a local to tell me these things. So for instance, if there is a bald guy, or a tall guy, they'll call him cum cumba. That's just like saying calling somebody a pole, which is so politically not correct here. A blind person, anta, a dwarf, bona, a fat person, moti or mota. Like I remember there was this family and the auntie in the family was quite overweight and everyone used to just call her Moti or Mota or something like that and I thought oh my god they're just calling her fat but there it's like they don't care I don't know they, they just it's very strange I don't know and they have a name for people who are disabled as well Lungra so if somebody doesn't have a leg or they hop or they've had polio so they're not steady on their feet then they call them that yeah that's how it is there they say it how it is in the west that would be quite offensive but in in Pakistan and in these areas this happens in other places but Iran it happens a lot as well it was a bit shocking a bit, a bit strange <laughs> so yes that was my 10 strange things there's probably more but these were the main ones yeah I mean these are kind of shocking things that you kind of laugh at some of them let me know what you think and let me know if there are others that I've missed out <laughs>